Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lords of Middle Earth League playoff for 2022. So I'm in game one of the finals here against Mr. James. So since I'm coming up from the loser's bracket, I need to win two games in a row. He needs to just win one of either game. So uh, backs against the wall for me. Anyway, uh, he's got some breathing room. So anyway, he offered me two tokens because I offered him two tokens last time and I accepted. So I'm the free peoples and he's the shadow. Uh, no choice about token. You just get one of each if it's the even number. So Anyway, so I start with Fear Fire Foes and Mirror of Gladrill. So I'm excited about an early Gandalf the White because, you know, uh, Mirror of Gladrill makes it much more reliable to be able to bring him back. And he's got Shadows and Breaking the Fellowship. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Uh, that's certainly a nice early muster card. Uh, eyes on Lorien or Rivendell with that card for sure. So he allocates one eye and rolls two more and one muster. I roll no eyes. So... <laughs> so that's nice. Um, like fairly typical, a little eye heavy and a little muster weak for him. But. So I move because uh, clearly I'm going to have to move at some point and he's probably going to save his muster till the end in case I get revealed and I get hit. But it's not a reveal. So that's that was very few for me. Um, just because I, I don't know. I feel like this happens a lot where either the free peoples just never gets revealed and they just make it all the way to Mordor in like three turns or whatever, or the, I get revealed like every other step, you know, and the chief is just on my back the whole game. So anyway, not getting revealed was nice. Like I, I, I was I'd still rather have not gotten hit at all, but uh, yeah. Okay. I muster the elves down. He's moving armies along. He continues moving armies along. I muster the elves again. Um, he continues moving armies. <laughs> Let's see how many times I can say the same thing in a row. Uh, he says, I have no idea what I'm doing. I say, yeah, same. Actually, that's not true. I have like four ideas, but they're all bad. Um, yeah, because there are... It's such a weird spot here. Because when he has one muster and a token, that means he can get a few different things. He could get Gothmog. He could get the Balrog. He could get Saruman. Or he can... Uh, I think he's hoping that I move again and I'm revealed and then he can bring in the chief that that would certainly be the plan a here so he's waiting to see what I do first so I could do a few different things I can I could use the token to bring the elves to war and then I could muster in Galadriel and then I could move or I can just use this as an army movement and then move but like if I just do something else he's going to use the token and bring Isengard to war so that I still have to move first anyway so there's there's a few different combinations of what to do here. Or I could even, you know, bring in Galadriel and not move the Fellowship again. That would also be an option because then I have a Keeper die for next turn since uh, Gandalf's been given the boot by Smeagol. Because as we all know, in the presence of great lords such as Gandalf, Strider, and Boromir, we're going to listen to Smeagol instead. Anyway, um, I end up moving armies and expecting him to use the token, and he does, and... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So then I use the token, so he at least has to use his muster first so that he brings in Saruman because I'm excited to kill Gandalf and get to Gandalf the White. That's the hope here. Anyway, because I have Mirror of Galadriel, I'm going to move again here and probably get hit and lose Smeagol and be ready to go for next time. So, yeah, the plan goes more or less according to plan. Uh, a three would have been even better, or or maybe the Smeagol tile, debatably, but at least I have uh, Gandalf back, so I get the Narya die for next turn. Okay, so I get Axe and Bow and Wisdom of Elrond. He gets a Sealder's Bane and King is revealed. So those are some pretty decent corruption cards for if I do get revealed. That's nice. Um... <laughs> he says, let me complain about the no reveals for a sec like an ungrateful child. Um, yeah, because like obviously me getting hit twice is good for Shadow, but neither of them revealed kind of sucks. So um, yeah, we kind of both have a right to complain about that. So he rolls no musters, which is wonderful for me, and only two eyes for me to move against. So that's not bad. Um, oh, yeah, because especially with wanting to play um, Shadows on the Misty Mountains and then go and do something, not having Sauron at war is 10 out of 10 a bummer. Okay, so... Okay, so he moves armies out towards Gondor, but the, Oz the, the guys in Osgiliath are just feeling very safe because there's no way for Sauron to be at war, despite these, you know, <laughs> hilariously large... 
sorry, hordes of orcs just sitting right next to them, staring at them. It's like, huh, they're not aggressive enough. We're fine. Uh, so I move the fellowship because obviously I'm going to do that and I'm safe. He continues shuffling armies along. I move again because I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with these dice next. I'm contemplating a few different things. So I could muster Gondor down, use the Palantir to play Wisdom of Elrond, and then, you know, start building an army right now. But what else is he going to do, though? So I, I just would rather move first because I'm going to do it anyway so I could see more of what he's doing. And they're safe again. So that's that's lucky. Um, getting hit on two at six would have been bad luck. Um, not getting hit on two at five yet. Yeah, it's like slightly over 50% odds that you get hit on two at five anyway. So, okay. So out comes Shadow on the Misty Mountains. Um, I go ahead and muster Gondor to war. He moves, yeah, the army from Moria and North Dunland out. Um, I play Acton Bow. And he moves towards Rivendell and towards Lorien at the same time. So it's a little bit... Yeah, it's a little bit crazy. There's... Yeah. Yeah, I'm really not sure what exactly the right play is, but I decided to start mustering in Rivendell anyway, because um, since Sauron is still not at war, um, he could attack me with a Nazgul and an Isengard regular, but obviously I just field battle and kill it. Um, but yeah, so he's probably just going to move closer to Lorien. Yeah. So anyway, he can muster Sauron to war next turn anyway, but if I have two musters, then I could, in theory, put two more elven elites in Rivendell, but then I'm kind of over-mustering there, and then he's just going to take Lorien. So anyway. Oh, so that's so interesting to me that he picks up Nazgul Search here because, well, you'll see how the turn goes, but I really thought that he came after Rivendell specifically with this plan in mind, but he just picked it up now. So like obviously going after Rivendell is not a bad idea by any means. So so I pick a, so I roll three musters, which is nice, but only one movement is kind of eh. No. Anyway. Um, oh, and also I picked up uh, Kindred of Glorfindel, so that's pretty nice. Anyway. Um, okay, so I muster in Rivendell first because <laughs> he musters uh, Sauron to war. <laughs> um, so then I muster an elite in Lorien. I'm not sure if that actually makes sense or not. I really don't know. Um, he attacks Rivendell. Um, so then I get a little paranoid here because I, I want to bring in Elrond as my keeper first because I would rather use his ring ability to go faster and kill Gandalf. But... So that's why I want to muster Elven Elites and not let them be besieged. But I really should have just been less scared of that army being besieged. And I should have uh, just moved first because now I play Staskul Search. And now I get revealed through Moria. Um, and, well, being revealed through Moria isn't so bad. It's the um, being revealed and not getting to move at all this turn. That sucks. So, And then it's a zero art, which is uh, just the worst. If it had been anything else, and then I could kill Gandalf and have Strider's guide, that would be fine. I would have two options then. I could either hide with the Palantir and move once this turn, which I think I would do, or I could use a ring to turn the Palantir into a character die, and then use this character die to play Mirror of Galadriel, turning it into a Will of the West, so I could get Gandalf the White. Um, both of those would be reasonable options, but it's a zero reveal, so I can't kill Gandalf, and I can't hide. So, uh, bummer hummer for sure. Like, just doing all the off-roading, you know, just bummers have been hummed. Um, so I hide, and then he plays the Sealder's Bane, and it's a two-reveal. So that is also, I think, the actual worst-case scenario, um, simply because I'm revealed again, and now I have to switch to Strider. Like, as I mentioned in the chat, I specifically thought to myself, you know, he's done some character card cycling, so he might have something that hurts me revealed, like Morgul Wound, Breaking, or Lure. Or he might have a tile drawing card. Um, the only ones of which would reveal me were those four. Um, and like we just saw zero reveal and Smeagol and a two leave the bag. So it's not, it wasn't super likely for him to get one of the standard revealing tiles, but uh, that's what we got. So that, uh, that hurt. He cycled into Orc Patrol, so that's perfect. Um, I play Horn of Gondor because I don't know what else am I going to do with that plant here. Uh, it's kind of fun having Axe of Bow and Horn of Gondor and play at the same time. Don't usually see that. And he attacks Osgiliath from South Athelion. 
Um, no card, no card. He gets one hit. I get one hit. Um, not a big deal. So I could retreat to Pilar Gear, planning on mustering next turn, but I'm kind of thinking I might need all my dice for uh, Fellowship-related things because I want to hide and I want to move and I want to get Gandalf the White. So I would just rather give myself that flexibility anyway. Uh, so I got three rings, which is always a great card, and Swords and Eriador. Um, he gets Lure of the Ring and Orcs Multiplying. I switch to Strider so that I can hide. Um, he thinks about putting in two eyes, but only puts in one. Yeah. Um, and I get two characters, two plot tiers. So that's not bad. Um, he gets four musters and three movement. Also not bad. So um, naturally I hide. Uh, he does an orc patrol and I choose to use Horn of Gondor on it. He cycles into a red tile. I move quick before he can uh, cycle on me anymore. I get hit and it's an eye. So, I don't know, that's not great, but at least I'm away from the Witch King, so he can't cycle anymore. Um, I took the Corruption there just because I was a little worried about Foul Thing from the Deep. Um, and, you know, Foul Thing, because you have to take a random companion, so uh, that way, if he drew one of these ones, at least I have Axe and Bow, so I can counter it anyway. So, uh, that was a thought. Maybe I should have just used Axe and Bow there, I don't know. Uh, and then he plays Breaking and draws an eye, so... Yeah. Um... As I point out, you know, like with three tile draws, like he, because he's done a Sealder's Bane, Orc Patrol, and Breaking, he got uh, like the best one, and then an okay one, and then a bad one. So that, that feels about fair to me anyway. Um, obviously, this moment was bad luck, but overall, it seems about fair to me. Okay, um, in comes the Balrog. I move the Fellowship again before he puts any rerolls on me, <laughs> but I get hit twice. Who needs rerolls? Uh, there's another one. Now I, now I use Axe and Bow. Um, then he plays Pits of Mordor, moves the Southrons to war, moves the Southrons to war, and attacks Venus turret. So, yeah, I'm very glad I retreated the regular there, because I didn't roll any musters this turn, so that would have been difficult. Okay, so I pick up Gwai here and Aomer, so it's a little bit of a tough choice what the second card you throw out is. Swords and Ariador is obviously the um, first choice of cards to throw out for me. Um... Oh, he's got David without Dawn already. That's nice. Arcs multiplying again. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, but check Swords and Eriador, and then I think about it for a bit. And yeah, I check Gwai here. So Gwai here is a crazy strong card, um, for sure. But Aomer is just so useful for defending Rohan, and I still have hopes of bringing in Gandalf the White at <laughs> turn five, you know, so early. Um, and then using Fear Fire Foes. So that's why I want to keep that card combo. And obviously, this is really strong because Rivendell is besieged. And this card is obviously really strong. And this card is also pretty strong. And it's a good combat card. So anyway, just tough choices, you know. Anyway, um, so I get to switch back to Gandalf and hopefully kill him. So that's nice. Um, he puts in one eye and rolls one more. And I roll a beautiful uh, two wheels of the West and a muster and a character die. So I move and I'm safe. That's nice. Um, he... Moves and puts rerolls on me, which I was not gonna lie, I was I was happy to see that just because I really wanted to kill Gandalf. Um, obviously, you know, the corruption pressure is still a thing, so maybe it is a good idea to put the rerolls on me, but uh, but yeah, so I move again and I get hit and it's a three, so that is very efficient for killing Gandalf anyway. Um, but of course, he has day without dawn, so no Gandalf the white for me. Um, yeah, so he. Attacks Polar Gear from the Southrons. Um, no card, no card. He gets his one hit. Um, he continues moving along. I could use this muster to bring in a Keeper, but I would rather get the Elite and go Amroth just for the sake of slowing him down. Um, he draws a card, and holy moly, it's Morgul Wound. Wow. Just all the all the good corruption cards. That's, that's impressive. Um, anyway. He attacks Minas Tirith. Right, he <laughs> specified ahead of time that he's having crazy thoughts right now. So he... What is he doing? I think he's playing King is Revealed here. Yeah, and I'm playing Shield Wall. So he takes two hits, and he rolls um, just two hits against my Shield Wall, so only one hit. And I roll four hits back, so that's pretty... Um, that's pretty crazy. Um, but he actually just wanted to as he shows here, uh, now he has enough work. So he is killing some of the Sauron regular so that he can bring them in from Dol Guldur uh, with Orcs multiplying again. 
So I guess, but like between these three armies, that's uh, something of a threat to the dew line anyway. Um, yeah. Because like the fellowship has been slow, but the, the counter side to that is that I have gotten reasonable defenses up. Like Lorien and Rivendell are very well defended anyway. Um, the dew line, not so much, but I, I like Gimli is still standing guard there anyway. And Gondor is okay. Um, like Minas Tirith was four one one. Now it's looking better since that good roll. And Dol Amroth is also just meh. Anyway, so I pick up Ents and Book of Mazarbul, and I was happy as I was to see Book of Mazarbul. Just everything else felt even better. Um, I really wanted Mirror of Galadriel for you know getting Gandalf the White, or it's a good combat card. And Book of Mazarbul is only saving me one die, you know. So I end up chucking that one. Um, yeah, maybe I should have chucked Ents. I don't know. Um, right. Okay. So fellowship declares, and naturally the witch king follows. Um, so one eye against zero eyes. Um, yeah. So it is. It is a very nice roll for me because I should be able to get Gandalf the White and get to Mordor this turn. Uh, there's a real chance that he might be able to stall me out though, because he has all these attacks that he could, in theory, cycle cards with if he got the Black Captain. Um, Interesting. I wonder which one is he playing first. He's probably playing Palantir first. Yeah, yeah, he plays Palantir first because he gets to cycle and, you know, hopefully get to Cruel Weather. And also then the Palantir allows him to use this Palantir over here. And it, and it puts pressure, like, if I was feeling a little more impulsive, maybe I would spend this Will of the West getting rid of his Palantir or spend the Palantir in a ring. And that would make it less likely that I could get to Mordor this turn. So, anyway. Um, he musters in Belgaldur. He exchanges the Witch King. Then he shuffles Nazgul around. Interesting. Right. I think I remember thinking that he probably had um, Shadow of Belgaldur, but I guess he doesn't have enough regular for that to work anyway. So, never mind. Um, I pass again, like, because since Day Without Dawn already came, I don't need to rush about putting Gandalf down and, and rather conceal where I'm going to put him anyway. Um, okay, so he moves, yeah, towards the new line now. In comes Gandalf the White. He attacks Old Forest Road, Nerd Card. Um, yeah, I put the good fusion down here just because my hand is so full. You know, I'd rather get some value for it, you know. Um, he gets a hit, though, and I don't get any hits back. I move the Fellowship, and they're safe. And he takes Carrick and moves toward the Minas Tirith. And I move again, and I'm safe. Which I'm a little bit bummed about. Like, part of me almost, like, you kind of want to get revealed here just so you're safe from Cruel Weather. But obviously him not having Cruel Weather and, uh, what do you call it, it is the best case scenario. So, anyway. Um, so he attacks Woodland Realm, and of course now I use the token... Because uh, I want to go last in case he does have Cruel Weather, then I can use a ring to move again and ensure that I get to Mordor this turn. Uh, and lucky skunk that I am, I pick up Threadwheels Archer. So I picked up a strategy card because the Fellowship is fine. Like, it's in really good health. Well, I guess not really good health. Pretty good health, though. Um, but there's a lot. There's several strategy cards out there that would be really nice. Like, um, Guards of the Citadel would be great. Imra Hill or Kyrdan Ships, or Thranduil, or King Brand, or Rangers of the North, or Dane Ironfoot's Guard. So there, there's just a lot of fish to throw out the line for here, you know? So anyway, I, and I get Thranduil's Archers, which is great. That's probably the actual best one I could ask for right now. Uh, so in goes a Red Tile, and and then I play Thranduil, naturally. And cycle into Celeborns, which I'm probably just going to use for a Daylight at this point. And I pick up Dane, so that's just great. Uh, it's just a hunky-dory day over here. Um... Okay, so he picks up Corsairs and Captain. <laughs> That's so typical. Just like right after you march your army all the way to Dol Amroth, now Corsair show, shows up. Uh, it's still a deadly strife, though, so that's still amazing. Um, Captain in Despair is always good, too. Here's what he throws. He throws out threats and promises. That makes sense. Probably Dreadful Spells? Or maybe Balrog. Um, so I check Kindred of Glorfindel and Ents because at this point, I feel like he's probably not coming after Rivendell. And, uh, like, the Elven Force pool is one regular, right? <laughs> so I could put a regular there, um, which would be nice. You know, the fifth combat die is nice. But anyway, um, and I checked the Ents because 
I don't know. Just everything else feels more powerful. So anyway, then he comes back and, and he chucks Durin's pain. Yeah, yeah, because going after Lorien is uh, optimistic at this point. So, yeah. Anyway. So anyway, it's turn seven. <laughs> this is my first time uh, having five dice um, in a while because... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it was just weird having so few dice for so long in this game. Like, like it was going fine for me. Um, but yeah, just I never had a spare die to bring in a keeper or the, you know, opportunity to bring in Gandalf the White earlier. So it's just, yeah, just a weird game. Um, okay, so in come the eyes and the red tile. Um, he rolls a couple more eyes and I roll... A reasonable roll. Uh, maybe a third movement would have been nice, but, but yeah. Um, so I'm playing something. Um, I guess... Oh, no, I think about moving troops first, but I realize that I don't need to. Cause the fear here was, like, I wanted to get this regular into safety before the Southrons attacked him. But even if they attack him, then they're putting the dwarves all the way to war, so then I can muster an elite. So I'm not scared of that. So I'm going to wait for this army to blow up Woodland Realm and move a step closer, and then I'll do this army movement, is, is my new thought. Um, I also want to play Aemer, and I also want to bring in Elrond so I can use his ability to, you know, go faster and then play three rings and hopefully get Elrond's ring back and go faster again. Uh, so those are my thoughts anyway. <clears throat> uh, so I end up just moving right away because I realize that there's no priority for these H dice, so I might as well move now before any more red tiles get added to the pool. And it's a one reveal, so that's fine. I'm happy to be in, you know, past Morgul Wound Rage. Oh, and he actually had Morgul Wound, too. Okay, I'm very happy about this now. Um, yeah. So he attacks Woodland Realm. I'm a little surprised he didn't play Blur uh, Morgul Wound here anyway. I guess he's feeling... Just because military is, like, not that close, you know? I guess, like, Gondor's fairly close to dead. So I guess if you get... Um, do plus Gondor, I guess. You're not that far away from that. Okay. Anyway, um, Wilden Realm, Swarm of Bats against Daylight. So, yeah, I... Oh, yeah, I, that, that was a bummer. I, I was definitely debating playing uh, Mirror of Galadriel here instead, which would have been nicer to have canceled, I think. But anyway, so he rolls one hit, and I roll one re-roll. Right. So it was supposed to be three combat dice and one re-roll, but... I was looking at the wrong thing. So, so anyway, I roll three hits. So that's that's very lucky. Anyway, he cycles into Black Captain Commands. I use. Oh, he realizes he drew the wrong card. Um, he was supposed to draw a strategy card, and he draws all the kinds dead. Ah, yes. Interesting that he says, "Darn, I like that card." I feel like Olaghai is actually better for him in this spot than Black Captain was. Uh, maybe he really wanted Black Captain to go blow up Dol Amroth before. Uh, him or Hiller Kyrdan show up. Anyway, um, he smacks down Captain of Despair because, uh, yeah, that makes, you know, um, I'll hide and then he'll play that character die and then, yeah, that doesn't work so well for me anymore. Uh, well, just that an eye is that much more dangerous to me anyway. Um, so I hide and he uses the character die and he uses dreadful spells on Woodland Realm <laughs> and gets the classic no hits. Um, expected is at least one, I think, like one point something. Anyway, like closer to two. Anyway, is what you should actually get on average, but just nothing. Um, so I comment that I kind of want a sortie because just the combat luck is going my way so hilariously so far this game. No. Um, obviously, I don't. Uh, and I move instead, and it's a three. So that's nice. Um, I take a random, and it's a hobbit. So it's a bit of a bummer. Like, I wanted to keep Strider's ability to go faster and maybe to play Athelas. Um, I was hoping for Boromir or Legolas anyway, just for more efficiency. So, so now I'm up to six corruption, which, I don't know, maybe I should have just taken Strider just for being efficient. I don't know. No, he draws a character card. Um, I pass. He brings in the mouth. I bring in Elrond. He plays Olog High. Um, and now I do some army movements just because I, uh, I'm a little scared of this army here. Like if I move this army to Fords of Eisen, uh, and then next turn I don't roll an H, then this army coming and taking Helm's Deep is a problem. So that's why I want to move these guys just straight to Helm's Deep. Then hopefully next turn with a spare muster or plant here, I could play Aemer. Then even if these guys come for me, that's at least a decent stronghold. So anyway, um, he proceeds with attacking Woodland Realm. And I play Heroic Death against his They Are Terrible. He gets one hit. I get zero hits. So, Okay. 
Uh, oh, he's pressing. I see. So interestingly, with Fear of Their Masters, there's actually a chance that I just one-shot his army here. If I roll 665 or 666, you know, then I would just blow up his whole army. That is, that's obviously unlikely, though. He gets three hits, and I get two hits back. Yeah. Okay, he gets many kings and ring rates are abroad. I get I will go alone and pass to the Woeses. Okay, um, so he rolls a couple eyes and a bunch of musters. I roll a few movement. Um, again, I move right away because uh, there's nothing else much I could do to help the pool, and I want to go before he puts any more red tiles in. And it's another three, so this time I just lose Strider efficiently because... Worried about that. And I use Elrond's ring to uh, bring that character die back. And he uses... Right, so he is obviously scared of the rings, the ring being taken back, so he uses it right away um, to turn that die into a character die so that he can make the hunt pool worse via Captain of Despair. Um, and he attacks Dale from the Witch King, and I use my Sudden Strike against his Black Breath, and I get not a hit with my Sudden Strike. He also gets not a hit. I get one hit. Uh, for the craziest moment, I was tempted to stay just because, you know, what if I do get a couple more hits? What if I kill the Witch King? But no, I just decided to retreat to Erebor like a reasonable person. Because, you know, uh, with a couple dice, I can get the dwarves to war and then I can come back and reclaim Dale. So that's uh, certainly an option anyway. Right. Um, he puts that other character down there. And then I move again here, which might be a mistake. Um, so, yeah, I draw an eye. What's on pool like at this point? Yes, yeah, so there is four eyes, a red tile, and a two and a one and a zero. So I don't know. Um, maybe I'm risking too much at this point by moving again and hitting a four hour. I felt I felt kind of invincible, which is probably a mistake. Anyway, um, so I lose Legolas, obviously, and take two damage. Um, yeah. And he plays Lure of the Ring now uh, <laughs> and draws an eye hole. Whoops. Um, and draws Boromir. So obviously he's dead. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's the kind of thing where it can escalate pretty quickly, you know, where I felt like I was in great health and now I'm in not so great health. Um, I mean, like it's, it's okay. Obviously I'm not going to move again right now because an eye would kill me, uh, you know, one damage to the Hobbit and four damage left. So then I'd just be dead. So, and, and he's not going to win on military this turn. So, uh, clearly I have time. Um, but he puts in another red tile. So that's a little, uh, that's unnerving. Um, he does ring rates or abroad. Maybe I should have spent a ring earlier to take away his volunteer just to avoid a situation like this, you know. But anyway, here we are. So he does ring rates or abroad and attacks Dol Amroth, um, cycling a character card, I guess. Probably. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he is cycling. No, no, he is cycling a worm card. Okay. Um, he gets one hit. I get two. And he presses. No card, no card. I, he gets one hit. I get one hit. Um, yeah, so I pick up a character card because, you know, obviously I'd like something that helps me heal. Um, he attacked Dol Amroth again, the other masters, gets only one hit, so that feels bad. Um, I only get two hits back, though, so that's fine for him. Um, he uses Great Host and gets just the one. I get one hit back. It would have been such bad luck if I'd also gotten two hits there. Then Great Host wouldn't have triggered as three regulars against two. That would have been, yeah, that would have been very bad. So I muster the dwarves to war here, which, um, yeah, now he plays Candles um, and gets two hits. So I was considering playing I Will Go Alone just to dodge this, you know. Um, to So if I play I Will Go Alone, separate this Hobbit, heal one Corruption, then not only can I play there as another way for movement, but I'd also be safe from candles. But we shall get it is there, and I don't have wind from the west or safe paths in the dark to get rid of it. And allowing him to, you know, block a winning tile for me next turn felt like a felt like a big risk. So uh, two corruption against me anyway is uh, certainly a blow anyway. Um, now he picks up cruel weather. Um, I play Ents just for getting it out of hand's sake to protect Rohan. Uh, now I play there as another way just for the healing because. Um, yeah, now that Candles is out of the way, I'm definitely not planning on playing. I will go alone. Um, so I might as well just get the healing so that I can move right away next turn before you can uh, cycle Captain of Despair to make the pool any worse for me. Um, and then I use a ring to draw a character card, um, which doesn't make 
a lot of sense, but it doesn't make no sense. It's kind of like, like, what can I do that actually improves my situation for next turn? You know, like I, I have these rings to burn here anyway. So, yeah. Anyway, um, he musters another Ollie Font in North Rune. Okay, so I pick up Athalas and Tom Bombadil. He gets Rage of the Dunladings and Warm of Sauron Toil. Um, okay, so he puts in one eye and rolls only one more, which is crucial. If he'd rolled three more eyes, then it would be a big deal because then they'd be lethal to me again. But as it is, I can I can get hit by anything and survive, but I'd obviously rather not hit her, like anything but a red tile, and then I win. Uh, so obviously I'm worried about him doing more red tiles. Um, Foul thing from the deep is still out there. So I just go ahead and move right away. And it's an eye. So, so yeah, I'm fine. Right. Uh, 10 corruption. So is close for sure. Uh, like he has more of a wounded hand right there. So if he got that down at the right time, then, uh, then yeah, then this would not have been as delightful of a game for me. But. Yeah, um, a good one, a very close one. Uh, good corruption plays on his part. Um, good military stalling. Uh, sometimes the cards and the dice just it really kind of put a put a dent in his tempo early on that that second turn with no musters, so that he couldn't attack with Mordor. Um, yeah, so I think luck was, like I said, more on my side. I think uh, like not hilariously one sided luck, but but certainly more on my side. I would say. Um, yeah, so I, in theory, I could have played off the loss first. Um, there isn't really any reason to, though. I, maybe if I'd hit the red three, let's see, then I would have been, yeah, because like one for Mary, one for stopping and revealing. So I would have been at 10 corruption and revealed here. And then if he had, okay, yeah, so the, the one argument for playing off loss is that if I'd hit the red three, and then he played Foul Thing and drew a two right here, then it would kill me because I couldn't use Gollum to reveal to hide, uh, to, to reduce that damage at all. But at the same time, I'd, I'd certainly rather just move. That's a pretty unlikely uh, combination of events there. So. Anyway, um, let's look at statistics. We can't just finish a game without that. So, um, Okay, so these are reversed, um, like 117 dice to 39. So um, so this is my dice, um, plus four on fives, minus six on sixes for him. So uh, you know, that's certainly a chunk of luck for me. Um, overall, plus three on attacks for him. Uh, low on musters early on, though, has to be taken into account. Um, yep, plus one on characters, plus two on musters. So, um, yeah, thumbs the dice. I'm very excited for our final game. Um, I think, oh, here's a response from him. Yes, 12 noon. So, so we are planning on having it streamed this Saturday. So that is January the 28th, two days from now. And it will be having it at noon. So at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, hopefully, I, I think Prince Fox is available to stream it. Um, maybe Galahad will join too. I don't know. So uh, yeah, live stream is always fun uh, for the final. So that will be the last game. Uh, winner wins the Lords of Middle-Earth League. So I uh, hope to see you there. Have a good one. Bye.